Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship on the fourth Sunday of Advent, Christmas Sunday. I welcome you to worship today as we light our fourth Advent candle, the candle of joy. I remember as a kid when we lit that first Advent candle, it seemed like it took forever to get to Christmas. And now it seems like just yesterday we lit that first one. Today we light the fourth one, the candle of joy, so that we know that the birth of Jesus brings us joy. So welcome to worship today. I hope it is a joy-filled time for you. HPCC folks, I'll see you after church on Zoom for a coffee hour. I'll look forward to that. Beyond that, it's Christmas Eve, and our Christmas Eve service will be online. It will start just like this one right on Facebook at 6.30 on Christmas Eve. It'll also be up there so that you can watch it anytime, and we'll do a rerun of Christmas Eve service next Sunday morning. So there's some opportunity for you to watch that as well. But for now, come to worship. I hope that you have in front of you your Advent wreath, or some kind of candle and elements for communion as we come together around the Lord's table today. Because it is God that invites us here, and we are made in this incredible image of God. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Let us come before God with expectant hearts and spirits. Let us be ready to receive the blessed gift of the Savior. We are always looking for evidence that God is with us. That sign is in the one to come, the one that God is sending. We want to know for sure that everything is in God's care. And so we cry to the heavens in our distress. Our cries are heard. God is responding in love and hope. Our worship services in Advent begin with lighting the candles of the Advent wreath. Each lighted candle reminds us of some aspect of Christ's coming. Do you remember what the first candle is for? The first candle is for hope. We strive to maintain our hope on days when we feel the pain and hurt of the world. Do you know what the second candle is for? The second candle is for peace. Yes, we light the candle for peace because we long for the work for both justice and peace. Just as the people of the Old Testament did as they waited and hoped for the Messiah to come. The next candle is for love. We light a candle for love because God is love and God is with us. That's something to feel joyous about. Speaking of joy, let's light our third candle. The candle we light today is joy. Joy is a remarkable thing. Joy is the confident, expectant knowing that God will not fail us. The belief that God's promises will be kept. As we light this candle, don't forget we have a job to do too. We get to be partners with God to help make joy come alive in the world. No matter if it is a happy time in life or a sad time, joy is still alive. In Nehemiah, we read that the joy of the Lord is our strength in all seasons. And this year, we have all needed a lot of strength. Thank you. 
Let us pray. God of hope, peace, love, and joy, be with us today in these final days in the season of Advent as we look toward Christmas. Help us to feel the deep joy in our souls that comes from knowing you are always with us, no matter what. God, let your joy be our strength. Teach us to interrupt our own restless rhythms and open ourselves to the joy that the coming Christ child brings. Amen. My mama told me something when I was growing up that has forever changed my life. She played the piano at our little church at 3rd and Pine Street for 37 years. She tried to teach me to play the piano, <laughs> but I wasn't very good. She would teach me the names of the notes, what a major key is, what a minor key is. She tried to teach me musical theory, but I was just bored. Then one day, she told me that the best news in the world is found by playing a simple scale on the piano. I had no idea what she meant, so she told me to play an eight-note scale. So I did. I said, how is that good news? And she said I played it incorrectly and that I needed to play it the other way. So I did. Again, I said, how is that good news? And she said, I played it the right way, but I needed to add the pauses. The pauses? She said, the pauses. Add them on the first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. Now, I was frustrated and said, how can eight notes with random pauses be the best news in the world? Then I got up, walked away, and went outside. Frankly, I didn't care what she was talking about. I didn't like playing the piano anyway. Well, years later, my mama got sick and passed away. As I was thinking about her, I remembered what she told me about the piano. Not only that, I still remember the notes she told me to pause, the first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. So I sat down at her piano and played the scale with the pauses. And that's when I realized the good news she was talking about.
Let us come before God in prayer. O God, you are the joy bringer. You arrive in unexpected moments and bring news that changes us toward the hopeful future we have prayed for. Instill in us the power to say yes to your nudges, even when we are filled with fear. Through your powerful promises, we too can have changed lives that shatter complacency and refashion joy. This we believe, as together we sing of the birth of the one who brings life. We ask, O God, that you hear this prayer, and also the prayer that your Son taught us as we pray it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Luke 1, 26-45, The Birth of Jesus Foretold In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me? that the mother of my Lord comes to me. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Good morning, church. Sometimes life presents us with seemingly impossible situations, doesn't it? I want you to think about a time in your life when you were facing something that you thought was impossible. Overcoming addiction, adult siblings ever coming together to speak to one another again, going on living after the death of a loved one, Accepting a new job opportunity? 
Heck, sometimes for me, something as, as simple as cooking dinner seems like an impossibility. Point being that sometimes we think something is impossible, and then we let ourselves get stuck there, which robs us of what could have been amazing possibilities. It's true. Our story today is about the impossible. It's a story about the no way that can never possibly happen. It is truly a no way story. Elizabeth, she conceives a child in her old age. No way. A talking angel? Not possible. A young virgin girl will become pregnant. Nah. Joseph follows through on the marriage after he finds out it's impossible that the Holy Family even made it out of there alive seems impossible. This is a story of biblical impossibilities. There are things going on in our world right now that seem impossible too. Peace in the world, how is that even possible? Getting through this pandemic? No. Repairing this massive divide in our country? That seems impossible. Restoring a broken relationship? Getting through surgery? There are things that seem impossible. And we find ourselves in the same place as Mary, wondering over the impossible. We even ask the same question that Mary asked in Scripture. How can this be? I don't understand. How many times have we stood where Mary is standing, wondering, questioning? It's not an idealistic, beautiful story. Scripture says that Mary and I imagine in my mind, her head in her hand, Mary was confused and disturbed, the scripture said, trying to figure out what the angel had just told her. What? Can you repeat that, please? And even after the angel then explains it, Mary says, how can this be? And the angel says, it can be because of God's power. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And then the angel says, oh, yes, and by the way, in case you didn't know it, or in case you have forgotten, nothing is impossible with God. There it is. Write that down. Nothing is impossible with God. That little sentence at the end of this really weird encounter, nothing is impossible with God. So that's the word for today. Possible. Possible. Anything is possible with God. But there's more to that story. There's just a little bit. There's one more thing in that story that I don't want you to miss. And that is in verse 38 where Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. I am willing to accept whatever the Lord wants. For the impossible to become possible, there has to be a willing heart. Hear that again. For the impossible to become possible, there has to be a willing heart. Heart. You want things to be different in your life? You want to get past what seems to be impossible? Then you have to have a willing heart and you have to be willing to do what God is pushing you to do. You must be willing to surrender your life, your hang-ups. Surrender those to God's plan for your life. It might not be easy. 
It might not be what we want. It might not play out the way we think it should. But we must be willing to accept whatever God has in store for us if we want to turn the impossible into possible. Because then, God's power, combined with our willing heart, causes that impossible to disappear and opens the way for all kinds of amazing possibilities. So in your own life, what seems like impossibilities, remember the words of the angel, nothing is impossible with God. My prayer for you and my prayer for me on this Christmas Sunday is the same response as Mary's. I am the Lord's servant. I am willing to accept whatever God wants. May it be so for all of us. Amen. celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and his coming. So let us be still and prepare our hearts as we gather in our own surroundings to commune together. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Creator, today we gather as brothers and sisters in Christ to share this meal 
as we remember the extraordinary sacrifice made in sending your beloved son Jesus to be with us. Lord, we come to you now to ask for forgiveness for any thoughts, words, or deeds that have not honored your name. Help us to use this gift worthily, to confess and forsake our sins, to confidently believe that we are forgiven through Christ, and to grow in our faith and love day by day until we come to the last joy of eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. May this bread nourish our souls and provide us strength. May this cup quench our thirst for you and the love that is so generally given to us. We thank you, Lord, for your grace that is at work in our lives. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the loaf of bread and blessed it. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, broken for you. As often as you eat of this, do so in remembrance of me. And in the same way, Jesus lifted the cup, blessed it, and said, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. Let us now partake together. God bless you. May angels sing their news as you travel to the manger. May promise fill these days as we watch at the edge of birth. And may faith tell you, Emmanuel will be with us soon. Amen. Thank you.